uh, in this video, we're going to be going over um, some uh, configuration for your dev box in order to use it with uh, Visual Studio Code servers uh, for assignments for this class. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you have to do uh, before you can be begin working on assignments, but after you've got your um, class dev box installed and are able to run it. Okay, so this video assumes that you've already got your um, dev box up and um, running. So this video assumes that you've already got your class dev box up and running, um, but um, um, let, let's go back over that again. So, um, um, so you ought to know how to, to, to start back up and then to access your dev box from your uh, web browser, right? So, so, so the basic way, uh, if you followed the previous video or you followed the instructions uh, for working with the, the um, you know, installing the dev boxes, um, uh, in order to run them, you have to open up a terminal on your host machine, however you normally open up a terminal, right? Now, normally your terminal should open up in your home directory, so I'm actually in my home directory. So if you followed my instructions on that previous video, um, you should have a directory called repos, and that was the directory where you actually cloned your dev box um, repository into. So um, it should be called cosc2336-devbox, uh, okay? So wherever you cloned your DevBox repository, you just need to first change into that, right? And then you need to do your Vagrant up. That will actually run your DevBox, which is a virtual machine running on your host machine, all right? Um, so as I talked about in the previous video, a couple things to look at, so I mean, to look for here. Make certain that your port is being forwarded. So for the Visual Studio Code server, um, this is running as a web-based um, server in order to access the Visual Studio Code IDE. It's being served on port 8080, okay? So you need, we need to forward the port from the dev box. So the guest is, is your actual dev box, the virtual machine. That needs to be port forwarded to your host so that you can actually open up that port in, in, a, in a browser, you know, whatever your favorite browser is, Firefox or Chrome or whatever, on your host machine. Okay. Another thing, make certain that your um, folder is being shared from your um, guest to your host. So here on the guest, there's a, a folder called sync. Um, you'll see more of this in, in, in um, probably the next video, but this folder sync is being uh, shared to my host machine, to this repo COSC2336 dev box. Okay? So this is how you can get files passed back and forth from your dev box to your host machine. Right? So if, if that is running, um, we should be able to open up you know, 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 in order to get access to um, our Visual Studio uh, code server um, in your dev box, all right? So if, if if you see an error instead, that means something's, you know, your, your dev box isn't actually running or it's not being correctly forwarded to the port 88 here, all right? Okay, so the rest of this, I mean, assumes that you've got your dev box installed and up and can access it. So the things we need to do in order to do assignments for this class is we have to basically get GitHub and Visual Studio Code um, configured. All right, so um, the first thing is, is you need a GitHub account, all right? So if you don't already have a GitHub account, you need to go to github.com um, and create one. All right, so if you go to the, the github.com landing page, you should be able to, you know, sign up, all right? Um, you'll have to pick a username. So I'm going to use TMUC student um, as my username as for examples. Pick a good email address. It doesn't necessarily have to be your uh, Leo mail email address. Uh, in fact, um, if you're thinking ahead, you know, you, you, GitHub is a good resource um, for your professional career. So you'll want to have a good public account, you know, for public repositories that you create on GitHub. Um, and, and whatever email address makes the most sense um, is what you should be using to link with your GitHub account. And, and you'll need to pick a, a password, all right? Um, but um, I've already got my TMUC student account created, um, and I've already got it linked with a good email address. I'm just going to go ahead and sign in here. 
when you sign in, you know, you, you won't have, if this is the first time you've created a GitHub account, you won't have any repositories yet. Um, but yes, yeah, so that, that's your GitHub account. So you need to have that created. Um, the next thing I'll show you is um, there is one extension that we need to install in Visual Studio Code that I couldn't install for you automatically. So let's go back to our running Visual Studio Code server. Um, in our next video, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the features of using the Visual Studio Code server um, integrated development environment. It's a nice tool to learn. It's becoming pretty popular. Um, in particular, you know, so we've got things over here. We've got a, a, a file explorer. Um, we've got a search function, basic search function. We've got um, a source control um, function here, which we'll be using a lot of. So this is how we'll interact with our Git repositories you use for assignments for this class. Uh, we've got a way to run debugging sessions so you can debug your code here. Uh, and then this here, that's that's the extension. So um, um, Visual Studio Code is, is kind of a modern, uh, extendable um, IDE. So it allows for people to create what are known as extensions and then be able to um, add those extensions. Um, so normally we would want to add, install the C, C++ IntelliSense uh, extension, uh, which is kind of a standard extension that Microsoft provides, uh, but we can't, for various reasons, because of the way this Visual Studio Code server is running, um, it doesn't really work to install it from the, the normal place. Now I've been I've downloaded um, the extension for you. It's a VSIX or Visual Studio um, extensions, I guess. So if you open up the extensions, um, open up this three dots to get additional um, options, and then install from the from a VSIX file. That should bring this up here, and then you should find it. So so it should be downloaded. If it's not, let me know but it should be downloaded in your home directory on your dev box, the CPP Tools Linux, okay? So this is the particular C++ IntelliSense extension you need for the Linux um, environment here. So select that and it should start installing it for you here. So, so you'll you see it. Uh, it might actually be not completely installed yet. Um, and in fact, if we open up Um, uh, so you see, but it's, it's really kind of still installing here. So kind of as a hint, since, since Visual Studio Code is running in um, a, a web browser here, one way to actually reload Visual Studio Code is just to use uh, your regular browser reload. Um, so that should reload it here. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's actually still um, installing here. But we'll let that keep installing, so let's let's go on to the next thing. So the rest of the things we need to do is really kind of getting Git and GitHub set up to work from your Visual Studio Code dev box to your GitHub account, okay? Um, so we need to configure a secure shell public-private key, so we need to add the public key from your dev box to your GitHub account, and we need to do some global Git um, configuration, all right? Well, let's add the, uh, the the secure shell key first. All right. Um, so we're we're going to need to be able to run a um, terminal from your dev box. Let me show you how to do that. So this is different from the terminal uh, or, or command line that runs on your host machine. We need to run a terminal that's running on in your guest machine in your dev box. So the way to do that is is if you open up the menu here, this is like your your top menu. For Visual Studio Codeio that's running in a server, and you go down here to Terminal, you can start a new terminal or, or use Control Shift uh, Quote to do this. So, so that will will start a terminal. Uh, but this is running a terminal on um, our dev box, and dev box is running the Ubuntu operating system. So you might have to use, to learn a few command line because there's other things you have to do from the command line uh, for this class. Uh, but you won't have to learn too much probably but like ls to list your files. Um, um, I want to do like a full directory listing uh, just to show you something here. So the dash a means list all files, even files that are hidden. Um, 
and L means to do a, a long listing. Um, you'll see that there's a, um, a dot SSH. This is actually a directory, uh, but it's hidden. So normally when you do an LS, if you don't use the dash A, you don't see files that are hidden with a dot in front of them. Right? But the dot SSH directory is the directory that has your public private key. Um, and in fact, I can list that directory out. So here, there's two files called id under ed25519 and that with a .pub. So the .pub is your actually your public secure shell um, key here that you need to get into your GitHub account. All right. Um, but yeah, we don't actually need our terminal. We'll, we'll need our terminal for our last step here. But you, we could have also opened this up using um, Visual Studio Code, so I can go do file, um, open file, um, and you need to navigate to the .ssh directory and, and then open up that id underscore ed25519 .pub, okay? This is really just a plain text file, but this this is your, your public key, and this is what you need to link to your GitHub account so that you can um, actually work with GitHub repositories in particular so that you can actually push code that you change to GitHub repositories, all right? So this, the, 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 the private key um, is really like a password, okay? So, so you need to keep that private and treat it like a password, but the public key um, is safe for other people to see, including to give to GitHub so that it knows if you're trying to push code with this pub, public private SH key, um, it knows um, um, that it's you, basically. So you'll want to take this and, and, and copy it. So I'll just use Control-C to copy that. And then we need to get this um, into our GitHub account, into our secure shell keys for our GitHub account. Okay, where you find that is you need to go to your settings. So if you go up here to the upper right and go to our yeah, settings down here, this will open up all your settings for your GitHub account, uh, including like your emails and including your SSH keys here, right? So I've already got uh, one key from uh, from another dev box. I'm going to create a new one, all right? So, so you open up your SSH keys, create a new SSH key, give it a good name. So I'll call it that, but um, for this, this is my uh, TAMUC student uh, video examples basically All right, so this is my, my secure shell key for the the videos that I'm going to be creating for this class um, here right. um, and then you need to paste that public key here make sure it's the public key not the private key right. and then add it right. so that, that that got this key and, and you should be able to see it this should match um, this here should match um, the um, uh, part of the part that you can see here. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm, I, I might be wrong there. So, um, but anyway, but but make sure you copy that over um, and paste it um, uh, in here. Okay. So that's your, your secure shell key. Um, then the last thing we want to do is, is there's a few global Git configuration settings that we want to set here. Um, so I'll, I'll just Google this. Like if, if you Google like Git config global settings, um, you can find like, like for example, this is the official Git um, 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 documentation here. So, but in particular, we, we want to configure the username and the user email. So it is important that whatever email you associated with your GitHub account, you configure that to be your user email on your dev box. All right, so uh, if you go back to your settings on your GitHub account, um, if you look in your email, that should be, uh, if, if you configured um, and um, activated an email account, that should show up under your emails here. I'm gonna copy and paste that and configure my email first. So, so that's the email that I'm using for this TMUC student uh, email account. 
So, uh, and, and this you will have to do from a command line. Um, actually, there are ways to do this from an editor as well, uh, but I'll show you do it from a command line here. So we'll want to do a git config global, um, this user email, all right? So again, you know, if you don't have a terminal open up, um, just to remind you, go to your menu, uh, do terminal, um, and then new terminal. Um, and it doesn't matter where you're at. So here I'm at my home directory when it opened up my terminal there. And um, I'll, run, I'll, I'll type in that command. So git config dash global. And, and you can copy and paste this if you can't remember it. So I'm, maybe I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll do git config. Uh, I'll do it. Control C to copy that dash dash global user email. Um, you won't be able to do control V here, the, the, the terminal. Um, control V should work for pasting into your editor, but in the terminal, sometimes things are overridden. So I think you have to use control shift V. Yeah, control shift V, um, we'll, we'll paste in here. Um, and then, then you need your email address. So I'll, I'll do a copy paste again of that email address. So control C. Control shift V there. So that should config my user email address. This will associate every time I do a push to a Git repository on GitHub, this email address um, will be associated with that push, and that will be how it links your push to a GitHub account here by this email address. So it is important that those are the same. All right. Uh, and then you should con configure your name as well. So this should just be your name. Um, Although you can use like the name you like to be called by, although I would appreciate that um, if this is kind of different, if, if the name is kind of different from the name in uh, your grade book, like on MyLeo Online, that, that you try and get something that, that's the same or, or similar to the how you're known as um, in our my leo system okay so although for me i'm for these videos i'm going to be using the name tmuc student um, as my full name okay that i associate with the account but, but you should use your name that's in your grade book um, for our class here or something pretty close so that i can tell at a glance that it's the same student as as uh, from your my leo online uh, grade book so, all right if you do a git config dash list, you should see that those are set now. All right. Um, all right. So that should be it for the configuration. So once you've got your dev box up and running, um, and once you've created a GitHub account like we've shown on on, on www.github.com, and you've associated a good email address with that, and then once you installed that additional VS Code extension, let me check that again. Let's see if. Um, um, so, so again, I think it's done installing finally, but it's showing a reload required. So if you see this reload required, you do need to, to get Visual Studio Code reloaded. Um, so again, you can, if, if it's the browser-based version of VS Code, you can just reload your browser tab. Um, and then we should be good to go. So once you don't see that reload required anymore, you should be able to like click on this and like open up the extension settings. And, and if you can see the extension settings, um, your Visual Studio Code, C++, IntelliSense um, should be working now then. So. Uh, and then you need to get your public-private key from your dev box associated with your uh, GitHub account, um, like we showed you there, right? So, and that is, um, you know, again, to remind you, you can copy that by navigating. So if, if you do like a file, um, open file, you should be able to navigate to your .ssh directory and find the .pub, id under ed255019.pub, and then you just need to copy and paste your public key from there um, into your, you know, add a new key and, and paste that into your GitHub account, right? And then you need to also configure these global um, configuration settings, right? Um, okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I'll leave this up. Here's a couple of, of links that you might find useful. So links for like um, uh, tutorials or documentation for Visual Studio Code, uh, links for using Git, 
Um, in our next video, I'll get a little bit more into um, some of the features of using the Visual Studio Code IDE, okay, and also using Git, all right? But that's it for this video, and I will see you in our next video.